Well, hey guys, I'm back again. So I had to get on here. Uh, the Lord put this on my heart to say. So there's people making videos out there saying that because of scripture, there is no rapture for the church. Well, I'm just going to reiterate this again because God has told me in almost every single message that the church is going up. And here's what he showed me. He showed me Revelation 3.8, which is the Philadelphia church. They have the only open door. It's the key of David, the open door. If you study all seven churches in Revelation, you will see that the Philadelphia one is the only one that says open door. Okay. If you look at Revelation 4, 1 through 2, John, Jesus says there's a there's an open door, Revelation 4, 1, and then a trumpet. And Jesus says, come up here. John is symbolizing the church, the Philadelphia church, the ones who are going to the wedding feast, okay? And then those are the people who 100% trust in Jesus and not on their own works. Now, if you look at Church Laodicea, they're not 100% trusting in Jesus. They still have doubts in their heart and they're trying to make it to heaven by what they do, not what Jesus did. Okay, so there are the martyrs. Those people will be the martyrs. They are the witnesses with the spirit of Elijah and Enoch. Okay, if you look at that in the study of the seven churches, there's only two churches that mentions the white robes. If you look at more scripture, the white robes talks about them being the martyrs. Okay, the other church is the Sardis church. Those are the lukewarm church. Again, those people are not 100% trusting in Jesus. So guys, you read the scripture, you see what Jesus says, yes, and he says those things, but there's more than one group of people he's talking to. John is referring to the bride. Um, I saw a video, I think uh, it was it was Matthew. Those are talking about tribulation. Those are your witnesses, the ones that are going to be persecuted for their faith. Because if you don't 100% trust in Jesus, you are going to be persecuted for your faith and you can't take the mark. This is what all these messages are that he's been giving me since December 30th because he's trying to warn people to become in the Philadelphia church so they can go to the wedding feast. If you don't rely on your works and you just rely on him and it's your faith and his grace that will save you. Guys, he will renew your mind when you walk in the spirit. You won't want to sin. Okay, so people are saying they're, they're basing on that. You have to look at it. What has Jesus been doing to me? He's been talking to me since December 30th with scripture, not in front of my Bible. And he's been talking to three different people. And it just jumped in my head today. Why three different people? He's showing everybody that in the Bible, he's talking to different people groups. And I also saw a video on that as well. She got the same revelation from the Holy Spirit. So when you're reading the scriptures, guys, do not rely on your own understanding. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. And he will, guys, he will. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Jesus loves everybody and he has no favorites. Okay. So when you're looking at that, um, where it says, you know, you're going to be persecuted and stuff. That is the martyrs who's, who are left behind. When you're looking at stuff where it says, you know, they have to remove the restrainer. That's the bride. If you look at Revelation 12, when the baby gets caught up, the baby is Jesus. But it's also symbolizing the Philadelphia church. Because if you look at what it says in Revelation 12, it talks about the woman um, fading away to the wilderness and the dragon tries to devour the rest of them. Well, who's the rest of them? The rest of them are the martyrs, guys. And the one who goes into the wilderness is representing the 12 tribes, the Jews. He showed me how it all works. Really quick recap. Revelation 4, 1 through 2, Jesus says, come up here. Your bride is up there. You have the two witnesses, Church Sardis, Church Laodicea. Those are your two lampstands, your two olive trees, okay? With the spirit of Elijah and Enoch will give them all the powers. Jesus, three and a half days later after they die, Jesus has come up here again. Then what does he do? He brings all of his holy saints with him to the second coming. And then it says the remaining alive shall be caught up. And uh, I believe the remaining alive will be Israel, the, the ones with the seals on their forehead. Because guys, if you think about it, 
no one's going to survive the great tribulation as a Christian because you're going to get martyred. So who is the ones remaining alive? I mean, with all the plagues, the famine, the pestilence, the storms, without the protection and the seal of Jesus Christ, no one can survive that. So it has to be the ones with the, the seal on their on their forehead. Now, I think he's talking to other Christians about it different ways. You know, maybe he's leading to them to be in the 12 tribes, um, the ones remaining alive, and maybe they're witnessing as well. I don't know. That's not the revelation that he gave me, but I, like I said, he talks to us all differently. Another thing I want to clarify, guys, the mark is not this, okay? So that's not a good thing to get. Trust me, it's evil, it's sinister, and they, they are going to try to kill you with it and depopulate. And I believe it has something to do with the new mark that's coming in, in the palm of the hand, like he said the other day. But it's not that because it doesn't fit scripture, guys. The Antichrist has to be publicized first. And when the mark goes out, you cannot buy or sell anywhere. Okay? So, yes, the mRNA probably changed your DNA. You know, there's a lot of things that change your DNA with the food and the, the poison they put in our food and in our water and everything else. But, guys... It's not the mark. So stop scaring people and saying it's the mark because it's not. And I didn't get it. The Lord showed me not to get it. You know, I, I knew not to get it because I knew it was evil. But, and sinister, and it's to depopulate. But not all of them were bad because, you know, they can't make every single one of them bad. Otherwise, it would be too obvious. You know, so some were sailing, I believe. Some got messed up by temperature. Um, so anyway, it's not... So that's two things that were on my heart today that I wanted to clarify for the people freaking out about that because I've had people message me about that. But the people saying that, you know, prepare and all that stuff, it's always good to prepare. God told me that, you know, we're going to see some destruction. Um, we're going to see some of that. But he said, when the nukes go up, we go up. And guys, what's amazing is this video just came out. It talked about April 20th, how the sun turning black in this video. Then it also talked about April 23rd, meteor showers. And what did God say in my last message? He literally talked about meteor showers and rocks falling, okay? And he talked about geometric storms that happened. He talked and he, and he said it was coming. And I got that message like a month ago and he said it was coming. And then California would get the lightning strikes. I just saw a video of that happened, you know, so everything he's telling me guys is happening. And he's the one who told me about the Philadelphia church. I would not have gotten that revelation on my own. Trust me. I do not know the Bible that well. I have learned everything from Jesus Christ. You know, I claim that he came to earth as a man and he died on the cross for us and he shed his blood for us and he raised from the grave three days later. And I feel very passionate right now, you know, with, with, with Jesus and he put it on my heart to talk about this because, guys, he's coming to get us, okay? He's coming to get his church. And if you don't want to face that, that's fine. You know, um, I'm praying for you guys that, that you see what, why he was talking to more than one person, look at, look at the books and, and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Okay. So those were the two things that I just, I mean, I had to get out also really quick and Mark, I think it's Mark, um, 13, 14 through it talks about, you know, not going back to get your clothes and, um, pray that there, your flight is not in the winter. And, um, I, I believe all of that, you know, has something to do with um, the rapture as well. I mean, you know, woe to the woman not who's pregnant during those times. You know, I think that that is talking about the woman giving labor in, in heaven, you know, when the dragon's trying to devour her. I think it all means something, guys. God is so clever. And if you don't know him, you know, you just ask him to come into your life. You ask him to, you know, forgive you. And you rely on him to save you guys, not what you do. It's what he do. He will renew your mind. He'll give you a new heart. He will change you. You're not going to want to sin because you're walking in the spirit. But we all fall short. We're all going to fall short. No one is perfect. Okay, I'm done my rant. And I'm sure God will be happy with that because he put it on my heart. So, okay, have a blessed day.